be. But surely we shouldn't have let it get to this state. We'll be down there to put the politicians on the spot. OK, it's not just the pier, though, is it? It's, it's I suppose, a wider problem. There is a much wider problem, and we've been looking into it. In particular, an all-party committee of MPs has criticised the way we deal with sites from prehistory, archaeological sites, especially in Wiltshire, where farming has been destroying some of those absolutely irreplaceable uh, places around Salisbury Plain. Also, we've been to Farnborough to look at the development that's going on at the aerodrome there, which has led uh, to the threat to a 24-foot wind tunnel where they developed the Comet, Concorde, it's at the cradle of aviation and it's not a listed building. And you'd like people to get involved in the show, wouldn't you? We would, yes. These places aren't just bricks and mortar, they're memories. Places like Southampton's clock tower here in the city centre, in Portsmouth maybe Victory or maybe the Tricorn Centre, in Reading perhaps the Oracle Centre. Where would you suggest as a place that should be protected? Get in touch with us at The Politics Show through the BBC website. Peter, thanks very much for that. And that's uh, if you want to get in touch with Peter and suggest your favourite... ...see behind me that brings us here today. Does the collapse of the West Pier represent something far bigger? A lack of political will to protect our heritage. As our past is ploughed up, bulldozed and built on, we'll be talking to archaeologists and MPs who say prehistory is so important it should be... Despite many attempts to restore it and money in the bank ready to do the job, the picture of the pier behind me paints a thousand words. Just a few weeks ago, disaster struck when the pier began to crumble into the sea and it's left many people asking whether it's now a symbol of our lack of will when it comes to respecting the past. Chris Connybeer, lucky chaps, on the beach. Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present Brighton Pier. The classic English pier. Fish and chips, fruit machines, fun fair. Actually, they had a fire there last week, but hopefully it'll be back to normal soon. But it isn't the only pier Brighton has. Just down the beach, there's another one. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the West Pier. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. This one's really got problems. The whole country watched in dismay over Christmas and the New Year as large chunks of this once magnificent pier crashed into the sea. It might have looked like the end of all hope, but the determination to save it is still there. Many of the original features will be saved for the restoration but a substantial part will be new. Of course, it's falling down, but it's essentially unchanged from 1916. So it's a really quite remarkable building. Is it recoverable? I mean, it is in such a state, isn't it? I think so, but it's worth bearing in mind that there are some great symbols in southeast and, and, and the south of England um, which have been rebuilt over time. So at HMS Victory in Portsmouth Harbour, I think it's 5% of the ship is the um, 18th century HMS Victory. The West Pier was built in the 19th century on cast iron columns screwed into the seabed. Over the years it acquired a theatre, concert hall, landing stages for steamers and other attractions. It was very popular, a good place to go, to see and be seen. But it's not obviously in good condition at all now, is it? And yeah. some people say Look, it's just gone too far. Yeah. Well, I disagree. I mean, it isn't in good condition, especially since the collapses um, after Christmas. But uh, it's still restorable. We're, we fully intend to restore it to its uh, appearance in the early 1920s. And um, we feel very optimistic that it's going to happen and start very soon. As well as lottery cash, there'll be private money and a commercial development. Some say the size of what's planned will spoil the view. It'll be the loss of the seascape, which is absolutely an, an enormous material difference. I mean, this is what a seaside town is about. When I walked along here to meet you, I was looking out at the sea the whole time. And, and that's what one does. It's, it's a deep, deep instinct. You obviously feel very passionately about this. I do feel very passionately about it. It's my town. I've lived here for a very, very long time. I've lived here since 1948, and I absolutely love it. I love it because it's beautiful. I love it because I want to see the sea. 
This is what it looked like when it closed to the public in 1975. And this is now. The wreck itself has become an attraction. To be honest, I think it should be uh, restored. I don't know, it's been taking a long time to actually to come to any decision before this happened. I think this is really disgusting uh, that it gets to this state. I don't think it should be restored. I think it's uh, really an unholy waste of money. The lottery money that they won will be better put into a hospital. My biggest love of every day is to come down here at the sunset and watch the starlings, which I know is a view shared by a lot of residents of Brighton. Well, back at this pier, which is privately owned, they're concerned about the West Pier. They say what's happening there is unfair and they want to stop it. Peter. Thanks, Chris. Well, Ivor Kaplan is one of the local MPs here in Brighton. Ivor, you were a local councillor here in the early 90s before becoming an MP in 1997. The West Pier has become an embarrassment for Brighton, hasn't it? Well, it's certainly in need of uh, restoration, and that's why it's important that a decision is made at the end of this month. Well, it's, what's gone it's wrong? Now, it's why? now or never, really, for the West Pier. Well, what's gone wrong, would you say? I think there's been too many delays uh, over the years, but the West Pier Trust and its private sector partner and the Heritage Lottery Fund now need to take the, the scheme forward in a proper partnership, and I think they can. And, you know, I hope that if there is a positive planning decision by the City Council on the 26th of February, that there won't be any bureaucratic delays. And Who's get been on, to blame, then? Has it on, been the bureaucracy up till well, now? Well, we need to get on and restore the pier this summer, otherwise it will be in the sea. Is it going to happen? English Heritage seem to have a more positive approach. I think the plans now are acceptable. I mean, obviously, there will always be people who don't want to see them uh, develop uh, the pier and the shore end uh, as, as other people would. There are always going to be debates, but I think now it's all systems go. And you think it's going to happen? I think it's going to happen. I think the West Pier Trust, the private sector partner and the Heritage Lottery Fund are committed to it, but we need to make it happen this summer. Now, it's going to cost £35 million, pounds, though. Do you think that's worthwhile? Do you think we should be spending that money on Heritage? Yes, I think we do, and I think you can look about other parts of Brighton and Hove and see the impact that Heritage Lottery money has had. Last Saturday, I was at Hove Museum, which has just reopened, the most fantastic exhibitions, and it wasn't full of older people. The place was full of children who were looking at a toy exhibition, and that's the type of development that the Heritage Lottery Fund has brought uh, to Brighton and Hove, and we want to see more of that. Super. Ivor Kaplan, thank you. Just a reminder that there's still time to get your questions in to the former Chief Inspector of Schools, Chris Woodhead. You can email us via our website, bbc.co.uk slash politics show. Or if you've got a mobile, you can text us on 07940-242-424. 07940-242-424. Don't forget to include your name and where you're from. Now, you might be thinking the West Pier is just a one-off problem. But according to a new report, you'd be wrong. The all-party archaeology group has warned that without proper regulation and protection, the secrets of Britain's earliest history could be lost forever. Nicola Conn reports. What do you think could be the difference between land on this side of the lane and land on this side? Land on this side is protected, and behind me you can see a perfectly preserved Iron Age boundary bank. Land on this side isn't protected, 